Scheiße. Here's the plan. A while ago, my father and I picked up a big lot of balsa wood airplanes. So what we're gonna do is pick one of the biggest airplanes we have, turn it electric, and then use it in a bomb drop challenge to see who can get closest to a target on the ground. We have a lot of things that we have to do with this airplane. We need to get a new motor for it. We need to make sure it's balanced out well. We need to make sure the servos work, and of course clean it up and make it look nice and add a drop mechanism as well. Let's get to work. So you'll notice that I actually had to move the camera just to be able to get this airplane on the bench. It sits at about 92 inches in wingspan, so just a little bit under eight feet. It is absolutely massive, which makes it a little more difficult too, because that means we need a lot more power, a lot bigger electric motor, and to prop it up big time. You'll see it has this giant gas motor on it, and those are really, really heavy. So a lot of times you need a lot more nose weight with these airplanes when you switch them to electric because those electric motors just don't weigh as much as a gas motor does. And because we are as professional as it comes here at Generation RC, we have some wet wipes. Uh, I've also heard that window cleaner works pretty well, but uh, for now we'll just start with some wet wipes and get this thing cleaned down. While this may seem like quick work, thanks to the magic of editing, cleaning this plane actually took quite a while due to its old fabric covering, which is less common on balsa wood airplanes after being replaced by a lighter material known as monocoat. All right, it is now day two of the build. I started it late last Friday night and then it sat over the weekend, so it's now Monday. But the airplane is all cleaned up and it's on the bench. So we're gonna go ahead and start working on pulling off the, I think it's a Zenoa G45. I think it's a 45cc gas engine. And we're gonna work on possibly two different types of electric conversions. We might do one big motor in the front if we can get a hold of one, or we might do a dual motor setup, which would probably give us a little more power, and it might be a little more easy to find some smaller brushless motors, but that is the plan going forward. All right, so we've kind of decided to change the plan a little bit. Originally, we had planned on going with just a really big brushless motor for the front of this airplane, but with the payloads that we're gonna be carrying, it might be a little bit too much weight. So instead, we're gonna go with a dual motor setup underneath the wings. And to help me out with the project, I brought in my father. Hello. And so hopefully we can get this built and done, and then we'll have a little challenge later to see who can drop a bomb closest to a target. That'd be me. No. <laughs> we could always build the motor mount and then on the inside. At the beginning of this project, you can hear us tossing around ideas about how the engine nacelles could be built and installed. But to be honest, for the most part, our plan was to wing it and have fun. So after some brainstorming and three failed attempts at different designs, we focused in and started making progress on what we would eventually call the War Cub. It 
it is day three. Got dad in the background there. He's working on some motor mounts. I as well, I'm working on part of the motor mount. It's a bit chubby, a bit goofy looking right now, but that's what we're gonna go with. We're probably gonna sink it down about another inch. But uh, other than that, we'll glue it in and put the motors in and it should be ready to rock. So. All right, Dad, what you working on right now? Uh, just readjusting. These are old motor mounts that we took off an old plane over there that you crashed. I did. I did crash that. Guilty as charged. Yeah. <laughs> just gonna readjust the mount holes and mount her up. So we got one of the motor pods done and it is beefy foam is all doubled up we got it stuck on the front here and glued in and man i really think this will hold up great no way it's off. we're gonna start working on the second one as well and hopefully get these both done tonight and then we will see you guys tomorrow morning and work on starting to mount these into the wings While I continued work on the engine nacelles, my father started on the nose of the aircraft, which was made of Lowe's foam, seeing as the material can be easily shaped in a small amount of time. Okay, so we decided that um, to, in order to get the batteries in here, in and out, uh, easily, we thought we'd use the nose cone to be like a cap. And uh, so we're gonna use some dowels, we're gonna cement it into the, the nose cone here. And then uh, put our batteries in there so we can have easy access and just pop her on like that. All right, so the plan is we're gonna have to desolder this XT90 plug because we can't actually fit it through the wing without having to drill a bunch of holes in it. And that's something I'd really rather not do. I'd rather keep these wings as strong as possible. So we're actually gonna take these and then feed these wires through a little tube that actually runs through the wing. It's made for servo wires, but we're gonna run these through it as well. And then re-solder this plug back on. I think this will be the easiest and probably the cleanest way to get what we want. So what we got going on, Dad? Yeah, still we had to cover this all in joint compound and we're not really sure how how it's gonna fare out, but we know that the paint we're using is eating up the foam. So we're just experimenting. Hopefully this will cover up the holes that we got and make it sound and make it look pretty. All right, so after a lot of questioning and not quite understanding what's going on, I figured out that the receiver I had, I think is actually for helicopters, which I did not realize. It's enabled. Okay. Um, so we ended up switching to a normal DSMX receiver, but we're gonna go ahead and put the plane on the table. Um, it's all hooked up and ready to go. We just gotta put props on it 
and it should be ready for its maiden flight. It's not really any super graceful way to put this on the table. It's kind of massive, but good enough. You'll see too that we did get the nose done. It's not the prettiest, but it'll work for just covering this up. This is just a bomb drop airplane after all. But we ended up covering it over a couple more times, sanding it a couple more times, putting primer on it, and then using this dark green spray paint to match the rest of the fuselage. So it is a tight fit. Ah, perfect. First try. But yeah, it pops off just like that, and we'll be able to slide our batteries right in the front so that we're not always having to pull the wing off of the airplane. All right, so we have some 16 by eight um, regular uh, composite propellers for the electric motors on this. And then we also have counter rotating props since the one motor will be spinning in opposite direction so that we're not having as much issues with torque on the motors. So we're gonna pull these out and uh, kind of, we might have to end up drilling them out just a little bit, but then we're gonna throw them on the motors and give it a little test run and see how much air it's pushing out. should do it that was about half throttle so that's plenty for in here yep i think that'll do just fine all right so we're gonna go ahead and take the war cub out for its maiden flight i am extremely nervous uh, but we're gonna transfer the shake to the knees and go out and um, go ahead and get a get a, its first test flight on it so we'll see how it goes <laughs> Okay, here we go. Uh, <laughs> pretty nervous. Wow. Eight. That thing's. Oh. Okay, we're good. We're all right. Thing took a ride off. Man, it really needs trimmed out. Yeah, it flies good. For the most part, it needs trim. But... Yeah, that freaking looks cool. Ooh. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Keep it up there while you're trimming it. Does it? Tommy, I'll bring it in closer here. I mean, just get her set up. It's got plenty of power. Good. How long do you think those batteries will last? Probably quite a while. I'm flying like half for auto. I'm trying to not get over the neighbor's house too much. Coming on by. I'm still okay. shaking. Yeah, come on, let me make a right turn over your house. Those motors are loud. One of them was in a wreck. Oh, oh, oh. man. Oh. I 
tried to bring it in and got pushed by the wind a little bit. Hey, it flies good though. This is good. I'm, I'm calm and I'm feeling better about it now. Well, you gotta keep your speed up on the turn, that's for sure. Man, that was terrifying, but hey, we're doing good. This thing is flying good. Take it back over here and go a right turn. Go a right turn? Okay, yeah, I'll do it. Come back around. Is the wind moving you around? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, with that wingspan being as big as it is, it, it likes to push a little, but it's not bad. Plenty of power. I can fly it. About 30% throttle, and it's doing just fine, so. Freaking looks cool, man. It does look awesome. Using both ailerons and yeah, rudder. I'm using quite a bit of yeah, quite a bit of rudder, not a ton, but a decent amount. It really wants to turn hard to the right. I think the motors are not quite perfectly lined up. Okay. Well, in that case, then we'll go ahead and bring it in. That was terrifying, but hey, it flew, so we're doing good, and we'll probably uh, end the episode there. Tune in next time. We're gonna go ahead and start working on a bomb drop system, and then we're gonna do our own uh, bomb drop challenge, and so we will see you guys in a couple weeks.